Good morning friends. Uh, do you know which is the most common cause of uh, peripheral vertigo? Or in, uh, which is the most common cause of vertigo that you are seeing in your OP? Which one? Yes, one is benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Otherwise we call it as BPPA. Okay. Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And uh, I am sure uh, you won't be able to uh, close your OP without seeing at least a case of or without giving a diagnosis of uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. That is so much common. And also in examination, this uh, you can expect questions from BPPV or Dick's Hallpike Maneuver or Epilis Maneuver. All are related to uh, BPPV. And what is that actually? Uh, it's a common cause of or commonest cause of peripheral vertigo and the patient will give you that uh, they are having a strong feeling of rotational vertigo on shifting the body posture especially the movement of the head that is a typical uh, complaint or the history the patient is giving there will be a strong feeling of rotational vertigo and uh, here also as I have told in last class history taking is a main weapon for coming to a diagnosis of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. History taking, history taking and history taking. That is the most important and that is the main weapon in a case of vertigo. Okay. So what is this benign paroxysmal positional vertigo? You uh, remember our uh, cochlea vestibule and uh, semicircular canals. He will be the ambulated end of superior canal. And the ambulated end of the posterior canal. And in between comes the uh, ambulated end of the horizontal canal. And the opening of the crest commune and non-ambulated end of the horizontal canal comes in between. Okay. So the ambulated end of the posterior uh, canal is the lowermost one. And here there is the uh, saccule and uh, here is the utricle. And remember the positioning of the macula. Where is this macula? It is uh, anteriorly placed, vertically placed in case of sacu and it is horizontally placed in case of uh, utricle and this macula the appearance is there is the sensory epithelium sensory epithelium okay and uh, over that Over that is a layer of what? That is a gelatinous matrix. And above that there is the autolithogon or the autogonia. Remember the barrel shaped. This is uh, given along with the anatomy of inner ear. If I have got any doubt, just go and study that and then come back. That is a, a layer of autolithogon or the crystal shaped calcium crystals. Right? This thing is situated here and also here. In some cases, this particle, this particle will get uh, loosened from there and they will float in the endolymph. Okay. And during gravity, they will come and deposit in the cupola of the ambulated end of the, commonly at the posterior semicircular canal. Okay. So, this is a autolith, autolith organ or the autolith from the utricle dislodged from there and they will float in the endolymph and during gravity they come and deposit in the uh, cupola of the ambulated end of the semicircular canal and the most common is the posterior semicircular canal. They can sometime, they will also get deposit in the horizontal semicircular canal and also very rarely they go and uh, deposit in the superior semicircular canal. So the 
but the commonest place is the posterior canal because it is near to the utricle and it is the lowermost one, the ambulated end of the posterior canal. So that is the cause of this benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. There are two theories by mainly proposed by Shuknet. The autolith uh, particles getting dislodged and because of gravity coming and getting deposited in the cupola of the posterior ambulated end of the posterior semicircular canal. And that is the uh, called the cupulolithiasis. And again the Shuknet himself later revised it a canal ethiasis. And what is this canal ethiasis? Canal ethiasis is this can also get deposited in the they can also float in the endolymph of the semicircular ducts. Okay. So uh, cupular ethiasis is cupula getting sorry the uh, autolith organ or the autolith the particles of autolith getting dislodged from the uh, uh, utricle and uh, they are floating in the endolymph and getting uh, deposited in the ambulated end of the cupula of the ambulated end of the semicircular canal and that is cupulolithiasis and if they are getting float uh, if they are seen floating in the endolymph of the semicircular ducts they are, it is called the canal lithiasis. And, uh, uh, what causes this benign paroxysmal positional vertigo and the most common that is the etiology or the causes the most common the most common uh, cause is head injury especially a closed head injury or a vestibular neuronitis can also be caused by infections or old age prolonged bed rest or uh, conditions which causes an inactivity of the patient or after surgeries. A commonest autological surgery causing a BBPV is stepidectomy, but it can also happen along with the non autological conditions. So these are the causes. And because of any of, any of these causes, this uh, autoconia get dislodged from the uh, utricle, utricular macula and it can either float in the endolymph and during rotatory movement it get uh, come and get deposited in the cupula which is in the ambulated end of the semicircular canal that is the cupulolithiasis or it can this uh, uh, autoconia can freely float in the endolymph of the semicircular duct and that is the canalolithiasis okay so now you know the pathogenesis and you now okay also you know the causes isn't it? What will be, uh, will be the complaint of the patient? Com patient will uh, tell you that there is a sudden attack of very severe vertigo which is a uh, rolling or a whirling or a rotatory feeling associated with a sudden change in head posture especially rolling over in the bed or when he wants to get up from the bed or uh, extending the neck is, uh, especially on uh, climbing up the stairs okay so the patient will tell you that there is a sudden very brief attack of severe vertigo there will be a sudden feeling of the whole room rotating in front on commonly on uh, trying to get up from the bed or rolling over the bed or climbing up the stairs Karangi adichavinu, adana a typical complaint to it. Okay. And usually this uh, vertigo will last for very few seconds. And it will, uh, usually it is around uh, 30 seconds and it will not last more than one, sec uh, one minute. And usually this vertigo will last only for 30 seconds and will never last more than one minute. But some patient will tell you that it is a long duration. But uh, if you are taking a clear history, you will find out that this complaint is a subjective feeling of rotation and it is not a true vertigo. Actually, the true vertigo of BBPV will last for less than 60 seconds. Okay, less than 60 seconds. It is less than 1 minute. 
but there will be a subjective feeling of imbalance or there will be a subjective feeling of lightheadedness especially on turning the position of head and there will be also be nystagmus you can elicit nystagmus and the typical uh, feature of nystagmus is that it is uh, there is usually a period of latency it starts around 2 to uh, 10 seconds latency okay usually there is a 2 to 10 seconds of latency and it is geotropic what is that geotropic what is geotropic geotropic means it's a horizontal or a rotatory nystagmus with the uh, direction towards the lowermost ear okay that is geo towards the ground geotropic towards the lowermost ear so direction of nystagmus will be towards the downward to downwards towards the lower ear and it is uh, it lasts not more than 30 seconds and it is also fatigable and it can be abolished by optic fixation okay so the uh, Typical nystagmus which is produced in BBBV is it has got a latency of around 2 to 10 seconds and it is uh, direction is always geotropic and it will never last for more than 1 seconds and it is fatigable and also uh, by it can be abolished by optic fixation. That is a typical um, description of nystagmus associated with the BBBV. In some patients this uh, uh, vertigo will be associated with nausea and occasionally with vomiting and some patients this uh, vertigo is so intense so intense that it occurs at very frequent intervals and in between the intervals also this patient will complain you that they are not unwell they are most of the time they are unwell and they will be having a feeling of dizziness okay so that is why most of the cases is mis misdiagnosed they will tell you that I am having a longer period of uh, vertigo but actually the vertigo lasts for if you take a very clear history the vertigo will last for less than one minute but in between attacks also they, they will be feeling a uh, dizzy, dizziness or a heavy headedness or floating sensation or a feeling of unwellness okay that history has to be picked up and uh, the typical uh, clinical sign is the presence of a nystagmus by doing a dix holpeg maneuver dix holpeg maneuver dix holpeg i already told you that this uh, bppv is diagnosed mainly from history and the clinical sign is elicitation of nystagmus while doing a dix holpeg maneuver and what is this dix holpeg maneuver what is that it is written here that is think that uh, the patient Examining the left posterior semicircular canal of the uh, left side. Okay, left posterior semicircular canal. So for doing the uh, Dixolpeg maneuver, first you have to sit the patient uh, on a coach. Okay, the patient is seated on a coach. And if the left side is to be examined, turn the head at 45 degree to the <coughs> left side. So towards the left side, uh, this is a position, put the patient, ask the patient to sit on a coach with the, if you are examining the left posterior semicircular canal, the number one, ask the patient to turn towards the left side at 45 degree. So the uh, posterior semicircular canal ambulated end will be the lowermost and the autogonia will come and settle there. <coughs> now what is the second position? Second position you are uh, turn, uh, ask the, you are asking the patient, reclining the patient uh, with the uh, neck hanging uh, below the uh, coach and supported by the examiner's hand so it will be like this okay the uh, in the resting phase ask the patient to look towards the 
left side for the left posterior semicircular canal as to look at the left side like this towards the left side so the posterior semicircular canal will be the downmost and the uh, autogonia will uh, come and settle in the cupula of the ambulated end of the uh, posterior semicircular canal and you uh, pull the patient down or make him supine with his neck hanging below the couch but the uh, face should be uh, directed toward the head should be uh, turned to left only ask him to lie down and you have to support the neck uh, head of the patient because it should hang from below uh, in this position this will be like this and the uh, and the examiner should stand here and support the head of the patient. Okay. So what will happen? And in this position, we are uh, posterior semicircular canal. What will happen to that? Okay, so this posterior semicircular canal uh, also will go down and the midpoint of the uh, semicircular canal will be the uh, downmost, isn't it? So, cupula will from here will deflect towards the midpoint because of the gravity. Okay, so the cupula from B towards it, uh, which direction? Ambulofugal. So the excitation will happen. I already told that ambulofugal movement causes excitation in case of uh, superior and posterior semicircular canal. So here in this position, this uh, autoconia will move towards the midpoint of the semicircular canal. So there will be a deflection, ambulofugal deflection that is excitatory and the patient will have nystagmus which has got a typical latency which is deotropic and V towards the uh, left ear and it is fatigable that is when you do a uh, dixolpec maneuver even though it is not recommended when you do the uh, dixolpec repeatedly there won't be any uh, nystagmus on repetition and each time it will last for less than one minute okay so that is dixolpec maneuver so if you are doing on the right side as the patient sit and ask the patient to look towards the right side and then you make the patient lie down with his neck hanging below the uh, couch supported by the examiner and two things you have to uh, remember that is the patient's eyes should be opened that is one thing and you ask the patient to look towards a fixed point uh, most commonly towards the tip of the nose or at the root of nose of the examiner. And when there is a severe vertigo, there is a chance that the patient will close his eyes. So with one hand you can keep the eyes of the patient open. Okay. And look towards that. So it should be open. That is one thing. And keep the one with one eye, keep the patient's eye open. With one hand, keep the patient's eyes open. And ask the patient to uh, look at the particular point and don't look uh, don't move the uh, gaze also and it, the nystagmosis in BPPV is so severe that it is rarely uh, abolished by optic fixation so there is actually there is no need of a uh, frenzel glasses in most of the cases okay so that is uh, dix Holpeg maneuver mainly for the uh, posterior semicircular canal and in case of Horizontal semicircular canal, you can do a modified version of Dix Holpeg. That is modified Dix Holpeg maneuver for horizontal semicircular canal. It is a modified version of Dix Holpeg maneuver which is done for uh, horizontal semicircular canal. And in that case, the neck is not uh, hanging below the couch. Should be like this only. In this position, only you can. So, uh, Ask, ask the patient to sit on a coach and then you suddenly ask to uh, ask the patient to lie down and uh, in modified dixolpec the 
uh, neck should not hang below the couch of the patient. That is mainly for the horizontal semicircular canal. And Dixolpic maneuver, if it is eliciting, if it is Dixolpic maneuver, if producing nystagmus, it is a positive clinical sign in case of a, uh, a benign paroxysmal positional load. Some clinical uh, condition can mimic uh, BPPD. So they are the differential diagnosis. The most common one is a migraineous attack, especially in children. A migraineous vertigo can be a clinical picture similar to that of BPPD. So one is a migraine and uh, another condition can be a vascular compression of the uh, eighth nerve. Okay, vascular compression. Or it can be uh, CP angle tumors like acoustic neuroma. In some cases, multiple sclerosis will also mimic a BPPD. Okay, these are the uh, clinical conditions uh, which can uh, mimic uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And usually, the uh, diagnosis uh, based on typical history and clinical finding. Clinical finding mainly nystagmus induced by a dix holpeg maneuver. So there is not much of uh, need of investigations, but if there is a recurrent uh, BPPV, even after corrective measures or even after treatment, it is getting uh, recurrent attacks. And if there is any doubt in uh, typical clinical uh, history, then we can go for radiologic, radiological investigations, uh, especially an MRI of the brain and those of uh, CP angle. Okay, so MRI scan of brain with special reference to CP angle and in the blood this uh, uh, exam, hem HP, hemoglobin examination and uh, peripheral smear should also be done as a mandate. Okay, so what is the treatment of a uh, BPPV? The treatment of choice is APD manual. So, epilis maneuver. Epilis maneuver is very important. You should be thorough with the five steps. There are five steps of epilis maneuver. We are ch uh, changing the or going the head and neck through five positions. So that this uh, autogonia will go through the, uh, from the some, uh, posterior canal, it will go and through the crust commune, it will go and get deposited into the or through this, it will go and get again deposited into the uh, vestibule, okay, or into the utricle. So, there are five positions which is called a APD maneuver. Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo can be effectively treated by using an APD's maneuver that by which uh, the autoconia which is deposited or which is erroneously deposited in the semicircular canal duct is redeposited or it is deposited back into the utricle. That is what we are doing in uh, epile maneuver. And this epile is contraindicated in severe neck diseases including a severe cervical spondylosis and also in high grade carotid stenosis. And it is best done. Um, I already told for clinical diagnosis we do a uh, dix Holpeg maneuver. So uh, best thing is to do a epile immediately after we are doing a dix Holpeg because the first two maneuver of dix Holpeg then uh, if it is uh, nystagmus is elicited you proceed with epile maneuver okay so uh, there are five positions in epile this is for the left semicircular canal i already described the epile man uh, dix Holpeg maneuver so the first thing what do you do the first position for the left posterior semicircular canal the neck is uh, turn towards the left side. This first thing. So that the uh, cupula is deposited in the uh, so that the uh, autogonia is deposited in the ambulated end of the this is posterior semicircular canal. Okay. And the second this is second. So what happened here? This is the uh, dix Holpeg maneuver. So the patient is brought to supine position with the neck hanging below the coach, below the table. 
and still looking towards the left side. So that from here this uh, autoconia will move towards the semicircular canal. Posterior semicircular canal there is an ambulofugal excitation and nystagmus will be elicited. You wait for the nystagmus to uh, relieve. And after that, this is the third. So, here what, what is that? Here, this is, uh, neck is turned towards the left side. And here, what happened? The patient is in the table, supine with the neck towards the left side. And here, the neck is, the patient still in the supine position. But the neck is turned 90 degree to the opposite side, towards the right side. Understand? So, here I am looking to left side, that is the first position. Then I am lying down with my neck below the, uh, my means patient, neck below the table and supported by the examiner's hand. Then after that it is turned to right side. Okay. So, what happened? This. Uh, Autogonia will still it will. So this is the posterior semicircular canal. Right? So this autogonia will again go towards the crust commune. This is the crust commune. It is going more towards the crust commune. And after that, the neck along with the body is turned. Okay. So the till now only the neck is turned. And in the fourth position. Along with the neck, the body is also turned 90 degree so that your head is turned 180 degree. So the nose is pointed downwards. Okay. So what happened? This will again, post crust commune, through the crust commune, it will again, this is a vestibule, so it will, autoconia will move towards the vestibule. And this is the fifth position. Then the patient is kept uh, sitting with the uh, neck turned 45 degree downwards. So, from the uh, through the crust commune, it is autogonia is relocated into the vestibule. After the uh, five position, the first one patient sitting with the uh, affected neck turned towards the affected ear. If it is on the left posterior semicircular canal, his head is turned towards the left side 45 degree. Then the uh, autogonia is in the cupula of the posterior semicircular canal. And after that, what happened? In the first procedure of uh, first position of Dix Holbeck maneuver, that is, the patient is brought to uh, supine position with the neck uh, lying below the level of uh, table. The autogonia will move towards the uh, semicircular duct of the semicircular canal. Then, actually, from that position, from the if it is turning towards the left side, then it is turned 180 degree. So, this is the uh, right side, first one, and from there, along with the body, it is turned 180 degree so that the face is directed to, towards the floor. So that what happened? This uh, in that position, the crust commune is the lowermost. So the autogonia will move towards the vestibule, and from that position, the patient is brought to um, erect posture, sitting posture. So that from here it will flow into the autogonia, will drop down into the vestibule. Okay, these are the five positions of a pili maneuver. One is sitting with the affected uh, head turned towards the affected side. Then uh, lying down or supine position with the uh, neck toward, head towards the affected side but neck below the level of the table supported by the examiner. Look for presence of nystagmus and once the nystagmus is subsided turn from the left side or the affected side towards the opposite side and then again uh, 90 degree along with the body so that the face will uh, point towards the ground 
and from that position make him erect. That is the final position. And you are, the patient is advised to sit in this position for a minimum of 24 hours. The best thing is to lie in an um, easy chair with a uh, minimal neck flexion. Okay. Um, uh, ask the patient uh, don't to lie down. So keep in that erect posture for minimum of 24 hours and patient is advised not to lie on the affected side. If it is a left side, not to lie on the left side for minimum of one week because there is chance of this autoconia going back into the posterior semicircular canal. Okay, so this is APD and the post, uh, post uh, APD advice. And if it is the vertigo is not getting relieved by this, it is becoming very intractable. Then there are two surgical options, though very difficult. One is occlusion of the posterior semicircular canal, and second one is section of the posterior ambulary nerve or the cingulectomy. Because cingular nerve is supplying the posterior semicircular canal, so cingulectomy can be. So two surgical procedures which can be tried in intractable BPPV. One is occlusion of the ambulated end of the posterior semicircular canal. And second is a uh, singular nerve excision or posterior ambulary nerve excision. That is cingulectomy. Okay. Medicines don't have much role in BPPV. But the labyrinthine sedatives can be given <coughs> if, there is, if the patient is having intractable vertigo along with nausea and vomiting. So benign paroxysmal positional vertigo is one of the commonest peripheral uh, vertigo. And the diagnosis is mainly by the typical history and uh, uh, elicitation of nystagmus by dix holtberg maneuver and the, we discussed about the differential diagnosis and the treatment of choice is APD maneuver which is this 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 uh, head positions and uh, uh, after doing this patient is advised to uh, sit erect for at least 24 hours and not to lie on the affected side for a minimum period of 1 week. Okay.